Welcome. So what I have is sine squared of x equals 3 cosine squared of x. And we need to find the values of that is going to make this trigonometric function um, true. So this kind of brings a little problem, because so far we've only had one trigonometric uh, um, function, and we are just able to solve for that, isolate it, and then you know solve. But now we have two different ones. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find a way to get them to be the same. Sometimes, like I said, kind of like combine them like terms. We need to get them to be at least one trigonometric function, so therefore we can prove that the equation uh, was going to be true. So one thing that I can do is I need to convert these, either both the sines or both the cosines. And um, let's see here. Since I'll just decide to uh, convert this to over the cosine over to sine. So therefore, I need to remember that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So therefore, when trying to find what the value of cosine squared is, if I s subtract sine squared on both sides, I get cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. And let's put x's there. I forgot to add that in there. Sorry. So therefore, I can say cosine squared equals 3 minus sine squared. So let's go and represent that here. So I have sine squared of x equals 3. But rather than multiplying by cosine, let's multiply by 1 minus sine squared of x. OK, now I have sines on the same side, which is good. Um, so now I need to multiply this through. So I have sine squared of x equals 3 minus 3 sine squared of x. All right, so whenever solving an equation, whenever we had more than one variable, um, what we had to do is always get them to be on the same side right, and see if we can combine them. Because the main important thing is we need to isolate our trigonometric function. So I need to get these signs on the same side. So what I'll do is I'll add a 3 sine squared of x. And therefore, I have 4 sine squared of x equals 3. Now, I have my variable that's isolated. And it's equal to a value. So all I need to do is undo still what's happening to my variable. So I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides. So I get sine squared of x equals 3 over 4. Now to undo the squaring, I'm going to take the square root. So I get sine of x equals the square root of 3 plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. So you need to make sure when you introduce the square root, we need to take the plus or minus of it. So now. I've done all this work so I can say I can say my equation out loud and then think of the solution. What values of x are equal to when the sine value is plus or minus the square root of 3 divided by 2? So to find our solutions, we need to go back and think about our unit circle. And let's move the unit circle over a little bit. So when looking at the unit circle, remember the sine values on the unit circle for coordinate points in the unit circle represent the y value. So I need to represent my kind of three main important points. And I'm just going to deal with the first quadrant because I have those very easily memorized because I've been doing this for a many different examples over and over and over again. So it's important that you either have the unit circle with you or that you have a way to um, know at least the points of the first quadrant. So let's just kind of look at with the positive values, right? So when is my y value um, equal to square root of 3 divided by 2, because sine represents the y coordinate, uh, on a point? And what you notice is I have at this coordinate point right here. So I need to understand what is this angle. Well, this angle is at pi over 3. So I can say one solution is x equals pi over 3. But that's not it, is it? Because now I, need, I know that x equals pi over 3, but what about at 2 pi over 3? If I reflect over the y-axis, my y value is still going to be the same, but now I'm dealing with a negative square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, that's going to be the negative square root of 3 over 2. So now I can say, well, x is also equal to a negative. Uh, I'm sorry, not a negative. x is equal to at this angle, which here is now going to be 2 pi over 3. But the main important thing now we need to look at is also remember that if this point is you know, positive, when else is, uh, when else is my sign also going to be positive? Well, what we can do is we can look at this and say, well, if I can continue this back around, I can be able to find all my um, certain values. So if, we, um, if I added 2 pi to this angle, I'm still going to have the exact same uh, solution. So therefore, for pi thirds, I can add 2 pi. And I can continue doing this infinite many times. So I'm going to multiply 2 pi times r. 
Now for my next solution, I say x equals 2 pi um, divided by 3. And where else would my sine value be negative? Well, at this value. And I can keep on adding again revolutions of 2 pi times r. So plus 2 pi r. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your list of solutions when solving for this equation. Thanks.